I'm now on holiday in Venice of all places and of course I brought my camera in case I would find someone to interview and I did. I'm going to interview Kristin Frull. She's a famous author in Norway but she's a tour guide as well here in Venice and she has lived here for almost 20 years and she has a lot of knowledge about the mystery side of Venice. You know Venice is such a beautiful city. 15 million tourists every year. A city without cars, a living museum with small tiny alleys and a complete labyrinth. But she knows like the secrets about Venice that usually are not in the history books. So I'm looking very much forward to that. standing next to one of the canals and Venice is so famous for its canals. Remember uh, the city is situated in a huge lagoon so you af actually have to drive across a huge bridge to come here with a car and then you can park the car in this parking spaces or garages and then from there you have to take the boat or you have to uh, walk around or you can take one of these gondolas which is I assume a very nice thing to do because they apparently sing for you and they know a lot of history about the city. So it's it's amazing, a city without cars. I just, oh, I love it. <laughs> Now, behind me here is the uh, Doge's Palace. It was a center of the Venetian uh, government and the the seat of the Venetian Empire and it's a museum now today with beautiful beautiful paintings with a lot of symbolism in them and a lot of history. So the next thing I advise you to do uh, besides going to the Duchess Palace is to visit of course St. Mark's Basilica behind me here. Apparently the relics of St. Mark's lies here and it's an architectural masterpiece with a golden mosaics inside and it's very famous also for its golden altar called the Paladora and it's universally recognized as one of the most refined and accomplished Byzantine craftsmanships apparently. Now, when you get tired strolling in this church, you can go and take a coffee at the Europeans oldest coffee place Florian over there from 1720 you know Venice is very famous for its tiny and narrow alleys just like this and a lot of people are calling Venice a labyrinth and I'm thinking that it's exciting to explore you know these small alleys because who knows what you find on the other side I mean there might be a church or a piazza with a lot of bars and restaurants and so on. So I think it's, uh, it's exciting to explore these narrow, narrow alleys. So let's do that. Let's see what we find on the other side. What did I say? A very small piazza. And it's early in the day, so all the tourists haven't come out yet. But like in a few hours, it will be packed here. So this is a typical piazza with a small restaurant here on the left side, and then a beautiful church. they sell a lot of masks it's because they have a carnival like 10 times a year where they dress up and wear these beautiful huge masks and they're able to transform themselves become another person it's kind of magic so now I'm sitting at the Bauer Hotel and 
at the back here you can see Santa Maria uh, de la Salute and that church actually Kristin who I'm going to interview is talking about and she talks about that it's um, it has a special architecture architecture with sacred geometry and apparently that affects you know the way you feel when you go into the church and that's part of the mystery about the city that there's a lot of sacred geometry here and apparently that a lot of that wisdom is lost today which is a pity and I don't know too much about sacred geometry but I can feel that when you go into that church it does something to you So I hope you liked my little Venice tour and if you want to know more about Venice and especially the mystical side of it you can watch my interview with uh, the wonderful journalist and author Kristin Flod and you can find that video on wisdomfromnorth.com So I'll say goodbye for now uh, before I fall into the lagoon here. Much light from Janneke in Venice.